Hello, my name is Trije and I blog over at aheartforwisdom.com. So I'm so glad you're joining me for today's treasure. I was just thinking about how it was such a beautiful day here where we are and the sun was shining and it was warm and it's first day of spring, but it felt more like the first day of summer because it was so hot. But it was just nice to see things in bloom, nice to see things springing forth with life. You know, after a, a winter, sometimes things just, when it's winter and it's covered, although we didn't have a very harsh winter here, so that was kind of good. But um, I know in many parts, like where my parents lived, they had snow and they were covered with snow at various points in time. And, and when winter happens, everything kind of goes into a hibernation mode. Everything kind of looks a little dull, kind of grim, but it's conserving energy to bring forth new life come spring and into the summer. And so I just want to encourage you today with the fact that you are blossoming into something that's going to be beautiful and that's going to be wonderful. And we, just like the seasons happen in this earth, we all go through seasons. We have winter, we have summer, we have springtime, we have fall. You know, there are different seasons in our life. And so I would encourage you, maybe you've just been feeling kind of gloomy or feeling kind of down. I just want to give you a boost in the arm, a shot of encouragement, just to help you to keep running your race because you are important to what is going on in this world you have something to contribute you have something to give and so i was i laying down and i was just kind of it was early in the morning everybody's still sleeping and i was kind of half awake and kind of half asleep and i just heard these words about how the cross has your back and so as i've been meditating on those words i just got to thinking about how really the cross took care of us past, present, and future. And when we received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we received what he did on that cross through his death, his burial, and then his resurrection, we entered into a new life. We went from winter of nothing happening, sin, and just everything being dark and, and gloomy, to bright life, to light being or life being in color again. You know, TV, when it was, there was a time when it was black and white, and then color came along. And so then you could see what was dark and what was kind of just gray and all the same tone. When color was introduced, it gave all of those bright and vivid pictures of what those colors actually were. Well, when we became Christians, our old, gray, dull, dead life was now brought into full bloom, full color, and we now have this wonderful opportunity to live an abundant life. And so I was just thinking about how, um, if you've ever been to a movie and you've watched a movie and maybe one of the actors, all of a sudden you'll see them flash back to a period of time in their life that previous that it happened. And, you know, that event can either make them cry, sometimes it made them laugh, other times it was just like, uh, caused a lot of grief. And I don't know about you, but sometimes in my own life, I have flashbacks to certain points in my life. And I just cringe sometimes, or they make me want to cry, or, you know, just different emotions that are brought up by those flashbacks. And the enemy's intent when he's bringing those things up is to send you to a place of darkness, to send you to a place of no hope, where you feel like you're hopeless, that you'll never make any progress, or you're not getting anywhere, or feeling like you're not having any traction. But that's not what the cross did. So I was just looking up Philippians 3.13, and it talks about forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. So when we got saved, the cross enabled us to do certain things. One of those, it took care of our past. It wiped away the debt that we had, and it enabled us to be able to come before God's throne to receive grace and mercy and help in our time of need. Not just the one time when we received Jesus, but from then on, we now have an advocate who will plead our case, which is Jesus, who will plead our case, who will stand before the Father and say, my blood took care of that situation. My blood took care of that event. It no longer exists. And if we're smart, we'll agree with Jesus. 
<laughs> because he cannot lie. When he says something is gone, it's forgiven as far as the east is from the west, then it really is gone. There is no remnant of it in God's mind. He doesn't remember any of it. So the cross has taken care of us, past, present, and future. Also, the cross made our past obsolete. So that means that it doesn't exist anymore. The Those flashbacks that you're having are of replays that are no longer in syndication. <laughs> They've been eradicated. They've been burned. But the enemy loves to keep playing those things in front of us because he wants us to get dejected. He wants us to feel discouraged. He wants us to feel like there's no hope. But that's not what the word says. The word says that it's gone. We are to forget it. We're to pretend uh, we're to look at it as if it had never happened because that's the way God looks at it. So I was just uh, reading through my book and I have this book called Sparkling Gems and I really, really enjoy it. It's by Rick Renner and there's a Sparkling Gems 1 and Sparkling Gems 2 and I'm going to read uh, Philippians 3.13 out of the Sparkling Gems 2 and this is what it says. It's time for you to turn loose of the past. You need to put aside and deliberately ignore and purposely disregarding what happened yesterday. The past is old and obsolete, so why fixate it on any longer? Stop turning around and reflecting on the past. You need to get it out of your system, put it behind you forever, and purposely forget about it. And so I just want to encourage you with today's treasure to forget about it to realize that you were made a new creation in Christ, that when you gave your life to Christ, you gave your whole life to Christ. That means past, present, and future. And so when you did that, he exchanged your sin, your death, your uh, non-existent life for his abundant life. And so I just want to encourage you tonight that there is freedom for you, that even if you feel like, well, I'm just the worst person on the face of the earth, there's no way that God could ever take me or accept me or I have to clean myself up before I get there. It's not true. You don't have to. God already did that. He took care of that with the blood of Jesus. And also that we never have to look at that again. So your past, when the enemy brings up those pictures, you can remind the enemy that it's under the blood. I heard Pastor Keith Moore say that uh, Jesus was silent on the cross, didn't, revi didn't speak back to those people that were um, mocking him and ridiculing him. He kept silent so that we could speak out loud. And so I want to encourage you today that wherever you are, if the enemy keeps giving you flashbacks of past events, past words that were spoken, and you've put those things under the blood, then 1 John 1, 9 says that if, you're, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive them. So that means that they don't exist. He will totally cleanse you of all of that. And the Apostle Paul, if anybody can do this, the Apostle Paul is a great example because he murdered people. He was in his zeal for serving the Lord, which he thought he was doing. He was hurting God's people. And so I'm sure every time he looked back, the enemy had a million and one, you know, replays that he could bring up about Paul's past. But Paul says, one thing I do, and that's I forget. He purposely, on purpose, deliberately made a choice to agree with his advocate. And so as I was thinking of, a, of an advocate, I looked up the word. I really like looking up words <laughs> because it just helps me to understand them better. So I was looking up the word advocate, and it is... In the dictionary, it talks about one who um, goes on behalf of the nether. It's someone who takes up the case and pleads their case or pleads their cause. And so I just want to encourage you today that you have an advocate, that the word says that Jesus has become your advocate. And so it says, my little children, these things I wrote so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. So we have someone who will stand on our behalf and say, hey, she's not guilty, or hey, he's not guilty. And someone who will stand up for us. You know, sometimes in this world, you can't find anybody that will stand up for you. Sometimes, you know, 
if you blunder bad enough, people are quick to reject you, but Jesus will stand for you. Jesus will plead your case with his blood in front of the Father. And so I looked up the word, the phrase, I've got your back. And so as I was looking it up, I looked it up in the Urban Dictionary, and the Urban Dictionary says that it means you are going to watch out and be a second set of eyes for someone. You will look out for their best interests and let them know if they miss something. You will stick up for them. So I want to encourage you, this is what God does for you. He's sticking up for you. He is calling you his own. He's saying, hey, I'm with her and she's with me, or hey, I'm with him and he's with me. So wherever you are and whatever it is that you're doing and in the middle of, I want to encourage you that God is not pushing you away. God has not moved. You know, there's a story about the husband and the wife and when they were first dating, they had a pickup truck and they were first dating, you know, the wife sat as close as she could to him. And then over the course of years, they were married and, you know, the wife was further away on her side of the truck. And one day she's like, I, you know, I miss being close or, you know, what happened? And the husband said, I never moved. So I want to encourage you today. God hasn't moved. If you've messed up, he's in the same spot where you messed up. He's in the same place. He's not going anywhere. But if you'll be faithful to genuinely admit where you've done wrong, admit that you've sinned, ask him to forgive you, he will cleanse you and he will make you brand new. So it's very simple, but it's something that we have to enforce. We have to enforce that victory. We have to say the same thing that our advocate says. It would be silly for someone to go into the courtroom and the lawyer says, okay, this is what I want you to say. And then the person goes off and they say something different and it gets them into more trouble. Sometimes we try to defend ourselves <laughs> or try to be right and try to have it all together. When if we would just say what the word says about us, we can win every time. Jesus was talking to Peter and Peter was, you know, in one of those moments where he was saying, Jesus, no, this can't be, you know, you can't, you can't go to the cross. You can't, you can't do this. And, and Jesus looks at him knowing that it's not Peter talking, but knowing that it's the enemy trying to keep him from his destiny, keep him from the plan of God for his life. And so he looks at Peter and he says, Satan, get thee behind me. And he wasn't talking to Peter. He was talking to the spirit that was motivating Peter to say what he said. And many times we're trying to deal with people when actually there's a spirit that's behind us trying to keep us from following God's course of action. Satan uses those flashbacks to try to keep you silent, to intimidate you, to cause you to want to draw back. But God says, I have no pleasure in those that draw back. And the reason why we don't have to draw back is because the blood of Jesus made us cleansed and whole and brand new. As far as the east is west, so your sins are gone, can't be found. And so we just need to keep reminding ourselves of that, that even when we feel like we're just the worst person on earth, that we remember, okay, that's just a feeling, it's temporary. And then I tell my feeling what to do. And so I just want to encourage you that your debt has been paid. You don't have to continue to try to be good enough to win God's love. You don't want to have to continue to try to be good enough and make, look, God, look what I did. Look what I did. Now you can love me. Now I can, I can earn salvation. No, salvation is a gift. It's something that is given to us free and there are no strings attached. So a gift is not a gift if there are strings attached and God doesn't have any strings. So that's the wonderful thing. And so I was also looking at Colossians 2, 13 through 50, not 50, but 15. And it says, you were dead because you were sinful and were not God's people. But God let Christ make you alive when he forgave all your sins. God wiped out the charges. God wiped out all your charges. There's nothing he's holding against you. There's nothing that he's going up. Oh, sorry, the blood of Jesus could take care of this, but it couldn't take care of that. No, the blood of Jesus is power enough to conquer anything that you're dealing with. And it says that the charges that were against us for disobeying the law, he took them away and nailed them to the cross. There Christ defeated all the powers and forces. He let, them, let the whole world see them being led away when he celebrated his victory. Jesus celebrated a victory. 
And as he is, so are we in this world. He's victorious. He's not mulling over the past in regret. He's looking to the future and to the plans that God has for him. He's looking to us to enforce what's been given to us. And part of that enforcement is putting the past behind us and pressing forward to that new thing. So I just want to encourage you with some points that, you know, number one, the key is that we come into the Father's presence. The key to being able to receive the fullness of Jesus' death on the cross, his burial, his resurrection, and the new life that we have is to come boldly into the presence of God. So instead of letting every replay cause you to cringe and run away from God, trying to be perfect or trying to pull it all together or hoping nobody will ever find out, no, the idea is that you come running to the Father and say, Father, it's under the blood. And when you do, when you say that out loud, no, Satan, it's under the blood. The devil cannot stand the blood of Jesus. So the more that we proclaim it, the more we proclaim what Jesus did for us on the cross, the more we proclaim his resurrection and how we're resurrected to new life. We don't have to be under the dictates of our flesh. We don't have to be under the dictates of sin. And we have an advocate who will stand up and give us the courage and the boldness that we need to walk through this life. So I just want to encourage you that you are victorious, that you have a place and a purpose. And then number three, to remember that Christ is your advocate. He defends you. He stands up for you. He claims you as his. So even if nobody else in this world is claiming you as theirs, Jesus claims you as his. And he's, he's happy to do it. He's not going, oh yeah, that's the black sheep of the family. We don't talk about him or her. He doesn't do that. He says, hey, that's my son. That's my daughter. And in whom I'm well pleased, just like he was pleased with Jesus. When we walk by faith, he's pleased with us. When we trust in his word, that the blood will do what it says it will do. That Jesus was more than enough. That his sacrifice, that he doesn't have to keep dying over and over and over again so that you can be cleansed. But that you were cleansed once and for all when he died when you received that by faith God says hey good job good job that's my child that's my child and he goes to work on your behalf so I want to encourage you I don't know where the devil's lying to you but I want you to know that the truth is that Jesus loves you the truth is is that God has a purpose and a plan and you have not gone too far beyond that plan that whatever your days are there is a plan for victory and success and even if you've fallen like the prodigal son and been away from home the father is looking for you the father is desiring you jesus is making intercession for you so if no one even if no one else is praying for you maybe you feel like well that's great for you you probably have people praying for you well, Jesus himself is praying for you. And if anybody can get their prayers answered, Jesus can. <laughs> so you're not a lost cause. You're not a lost case. So I want to encourage you, believe that today. Believe that the past is the past. It's gone. Press forward to the new life that you've been given. And as you do, keep speaking the word. I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are new. His mercies are new every morning. His mercies are new every day. So every day you get a fresh start. Every day you get another opportunity to make choices for God. Every day you get an opportunity to follow in his footsteps. And you're not left without help. You have an advocate. He sent the Holy Spirit to help you, to be your comforter, your counselor, to give you wisdom, to show you when you've done wrong, but then also to show you what the right path is. So that's what I want to encourage you. When those flashbacks come, you tell Satan just like Jesus did, get thee behind me. I'm going forward and I'm going to finish my course and I'm going to finish it with joy. So thanks for joining me tonight and I hope that you are encouraged to know that you are important, that you have a purpose, a destiny, and a plan, and God is so excited to help you discover it and to help you to walk it out. He's not mad at you. So receive his love, receive that truth, 
and move forward in your new life. So that's today's treasure. I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you need some more encouragement, you can always go to aheartforwisdom.com or you can go to Drugé at a Heart for Wisdom YouTube channel and you can find more videos that will give you some encouragement and a boost for your day. Thanks for joining me today and have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.